The Simpleton's Guide! Hello, and welcome to The Simpleton's Guide. Because simple is better. Today we'll be talking about the unintended consequences of environmental policy. Naturally, any large-scale endeavor involving millions of people and dozens of government agencies is going to have a certain number of unintended consequences. Unfortunately, government efforts to secure a flourishing environment have had some especially negative results. The story starts with one of the earliest founders of modern environmentalism, the biologist Rachel Carson. In 1962, her book Silent Spring was published. In it, Carson warned readers of the supposedly lethal nature of modern pesticides, especially the insecticide DDT. As a result of her dramatic claims and the activists she inspired, DDT was eventually banned in the United States and most of the rest of the world. What the opponents of DDT ignored, however, was that it wasn't just used to kill pests in farm fields, but it was also vitally important for killing insects that cause diseases like malaria. As a result of international pressure, many nations were forced to stop using DDT, with disastrous results. To this day, hundreds of thousands of poor people around the world die unnecessarily of preventable diseases. Many of those deaths are due to the decisions made by a handful of people who are more worried about farm pollution in the U.S. than fighting disease in poor countries. And the DDT story is not the only environmental threat to people's lives. In recent years, people worried about global warming have tried to replace fuels made from oil with fuels made from plants. The best example, ethanol, is usually made from corn. Now, while biofuels like ethanol can replace some fossil fuel use, they come with a hidden cost. Since most ethanol is made from corn and other grains that would otherwise be eaten as food, the increased demand has meant that prices for basic food supplies have increased dramatically in recent years. For most people in the United States, this has been a minor inconvenience. But for people in the developing world, it's meant the difference between health and starvation. By the spring of 2008, rising food prices had caused food riots everywhere from Mexico to Egypt to the Philippines. The unintended consequences reach people here in the U.S. as well. Since the 1970s, the U.S. government has regulated the fuel efficiency of new cars. Unfortunately, in order to comply with these regulations, manufacturers have had to downsize their new cars over time, making them less safe than they would otherwise be. In fact, the National Academy of Sciences concluded that these fuel economy rules contribute to between 1,300 and 2,600 traffic deaths per year by restricting the availability of larger cars. We all want a healthy environment, and there are dozens of ways that each of us can work to help make that goal a reality. Asking the government to force everyone to follow the same path, however, often creates side effects that end up harming human health and welfare, and even in the environment itself. Individually, we can stop what we're doing if the results turn out counterproductive. Stopping the government is a whole lot more difficult. This has been the Simpleton's Guide to Unintended Consequences of Environmental Policy. Until next time, keep it simple.